Hello everyone, I'm Steve Schimpf, and this is part of our continuing series called Coping with COVID. It's number uh, three in the series. And the last two, we spend time talking about wearing a mask, social distancing, avoiding crowded spaces, avoiding spaces that don't have much air circulation, and of course, washing our hands. And, uh, and if you can't wash, then to use um, uh, a disinfectant on your hand. So today I want to focus more on masks. And the reason is that there's been a lot of controversy and a lot of people think, well, I don't need to wear a mask. So I really want to get into that. So just in the last few days, Dr. Robert Redfield, who is the director of the Centers for Disease Control, said a couple things on different days. One day he said, if everyone would wear a mask every time it's appropriate, without fail, we could bring this whole pandemic within control, not, at, not get rid of it, but within control within two months. That's a really important comment coming at a time when we're seeing huge rises in the numbers of cases all across the country. And the other thing he said was, of all the different things we do, the most important thing is wear a mask. The most important thing is wear a mask. So we'll talk again in a few minutes about when, but I just wanted to get that emphasis out. It's so, so important. If you think about who gets infected and how, it's all about whether the virus gets to your respiratory tract. It can be a lot of virus, excuse me, a lot of virus all of a sudden, or it can be a little bit, but over time. Either way, if you get enough virus, you're going to get infected. Actually, next time I want to talk a little bit about how we can keep our immune system up as much as possible so that we can try and ward off the virus when, we, when it comes to us. Uh, but again, if it's a big enough dose, it's going to get us. So the assumption had been by the medical experts was that like other respiratory viruses, influenza and others, it was passed on largely by not large droplets, but tiny little droplets that come with a cough or a sneeze. And so if you thought about that, if you say, okay, look, if you get symptoms, if you're coughing, stay home, don't come out. It makes sense. But it turns out that wasn't enough of an answer. And they also said at the same time, look, don't wear a mask. You don't need to. And because if you're not coughing, you don't need a mask. And if you are coughing, get inside. But the other thing was there was a huge shortage of masks and there wasn't enough for healthcare providers and hospitals. A lot of concern about that. And just like toilet paper being hoarded, there was a concern that masks were being hoarded and there wouldn't be available for those who really needed it. Okay, so time has gone on. The CDC, the NIH, the WHO, the World Health Organization, they all said essentially the same thing. You don't need to wear a mask. In fact, don't wear a mask because we need to save them for healthcare providers. That much was right, but the other assumption was wrong. It turns out most, most of the spread of this virus is not by droplets, not by coughing. It's by people just breathing. Breathing, speaking, singing. Actually, in that order, uh, of, if, when you're singing, you're really spewing it out, if you will. Talking pushes more out, loud talking more out, and just breathing puts some out. But this is what no one appreciated, was that, that these very fine aerosols, not droplets, but very fine aerosols, could get up in the air, they could float in the air, they could stay up for a long time. The droplets will fall to the ground, but the aerosols will stay up there and circulate. So that wasn't appreciated, and the WHO said there's no evidence when other people said that was the case. But anyway, it turns out that's where most of the transmission has come from. Most of it's come from asymptomatic people. So this is another important point. Again, it was thought that it was the person who's coughing, sneezing, who, who knows they have it at this point, uh, but not the person who doesn't know it. And what we do know is this, that for a few days, two, three days, before you break out with the cough and fever and so on, you're spewing out that virus in your breathing, in your speaking, but you don't know you have it. So you can be interacting with somebody else. You think everything's fine. They think everything's fine. No, it's not. You're spewing out that virus. If you're in an enclosed space, even worse. 
the other thing that we've learned over time is that probably most people who contract this virus and get infected never have any symptoms. So they go around minding their own business, they're spewing out the virus. And I think that, hope that explains why a mask is so very, very important. Uh, even today, or until very recently, the World Health Organization kept saying, well, it's possible, but there's just not enough evidence, not enough evidence. Well, the evidence was really there, and there were some examples that, are, that, are, that have been well known since February. One was this big strategy meeting of the company called Biogen. It was up in Boston. They brought in people from around the world, actually. They're high-level people for this strategy meeting. Well, it turned out one person who came in from Germany didn't know she was infected, and she was able to get a huge number of people at this meeting uh, who then left to their own home areas, spread the virus around. The second story, which you probably have heard before, is this uh, choir group out in Washington State. I think there were like 83 people in the choir, and they, they met on a Tuesday evening or so in a relatively confined space. They were there for two and a half hours doing their thing. It turns out one person had the virus, didn't know it, and some 70 plus people developed infection and a number of them ended up in the hospital. So again, it was all this aerosolization, in this case from singing, that spread it around. There's another example that gets commented on frequently. There's a funeral down in one of the southern states. People came together for the funeral. You know what happens. People hug, people kiss, people get up close together, people cry. Again, all it took was one person who had the infection and it spread around to a huge number of people and then from there to more people. So we know, um, it, it, we don't need more evidence than that. So now, finally, uh, everybody's saying um, mask is the key thing. It is aerosol transmission. It is from the asymptomatic person primarily that this, this disease is being uh, transmitted being spread to others. So what has to be done? You've got to wear this thing. And it doesn't matter if you wear what I've got on, a surgical mask, you want something a little fancier or just more, more in tune, do that. Um, whatever you like, but wear it. So when should you wear it? Anytime you go out. Anytime you go out, you should wear your mask. Uh, if you're going to somebody else's home, definitely want to wear it there. You have to make this assumption. I may be infected, you may be infected. It's not a question of trust, it's a question of, it just is, that's the way it is, folks. We have to assume that anybody we come in contact with is infected. They'll be asymptomatic, you're asymptomatic, and you don't know if you've got it. You won't know until you get sick, and you may never get sick. So. We have to assume. So if you go to somebody's house, go to their home, you wear your mask, they wear their mask, and you, of course you social distance. At least six feet, as we demonstrated in an earlier show. What if someone comes to your home and you know them? You know, it's a relative. You say, oh, they're fine. Uh-uh. You have to assume they might be, have the infection and they might be spreading it. So they come to you, they wear a mask, you wear a mask, keep it a distance in your home. Now, okay, what if we're out taking a walk? Well, it doesn't matter. I could be here without this mask on right now. We're out in the open. Um, but there's videographers right over there. You can't see them. And they're far enough away that probably we could get by without a mask. But still, you know, they don't want it, I don't want it. And I think that's the approach you need to take. As we walk around the campus here, most people, not everybody, but most people are sort of getting the idea. And they wear their masks. Sometimes if you're taking a walk, they pull the mask down for a while, but if they get close to you or, you know, 50 yards away, they pull their mask up. And that's okay. It's particularly on a hot, humid day when you're getting some, uh, 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 humidity, you know, condensation on your glasses. But basically, just keep it on. Don't take it down. Just leave it up. And some people say, well, I can't breathe well. My response to that is from my surgical friends who say, hey, 
I wore a mask in the OR for hours and hours and hours. And I never had any problem with it. So I don't know about this. I can't breathe through it. Yeah, it's a little harder, I know, but not really. So wear it. Um, I, I, just, just, it's just an example yesterday. We were out taking a walk, my wife and I, and we passed a guy without a mask on. And he was on the other side of the, of the road. Um, but my wife couldn't resist, and she said, where's your mask? He said, I don't need one. I'm on the other side of the road, and I don't get near anybody. So she said, oh, I guess you have it in your pocket for when you do get near to somebody. He said, no, I don't have one with me, uh, but when I get to my office, I'll put it on. He misses the point. He misses the point big time. If he wants to stop and talk to someone, maybe he doesn't want to stop and talk to anybody. Maybe he's asocial. But if he did want to talk and stop and talk to somebody, or someone else came up to him and wanted to talk, he doesn't have a mask to put on. He said he'd wear one when he got to his office, but how's he going to get from the front door to his office? Well, maybe it's his personal office and he gets right in. I don't know. But what we all have to do is wear the mask. So when you see somebody who's not, what should you do? Should you confront them? Should you challenge them? Actually, you probably shouldn't. The best thing to do is be just a good role model. Wear your mask and let it go with that. So hopefully this has kind of given some explanation of why early on we were told, no, don't wear a mask. But now it's really clear cut. If you wear the mask, you'll protect your, oh, that's another little point here. In wearing the mask, you're doing two things. If I'm infected by wearing this mask, I reduce your chance of getting it by about 70%. If you wear your mask, you're reducing your chance by another 30%. Maybe not quite 100% total, but very close. So it, it's, it's really important. So what we're really all doing, as much as anything, is protecting everybody else. And if we kind of thought that way, remember that we're a community, and it's up to us as individuals uh, to, to, to think about everybody else. Well, that's my basic message. <laughs> Wear your mask. Thanks very much.